Good evening, everyone. Just a real quick reminder, this meeting is uh, being shown live on Channel 97 and will also be recorded and posted on the Sun Lakes website. Um, we're going to call the meeting to order at um, 6.30. Um, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Welcome, Welcome everyone. everyone. We'll begin our evening tonight with the uh, Executive General Manager's Report. Thank you, Madam President, members of the board and community. Welcome. I will give a, some quick updates. First, some staffing updates. We have an executive chef. We have been fortunate to hire Chef Chris Rubino. Executive Chef Chris is classically trained in Italy. He has resort and country club experience, most recently at Canyon Crest Country Club in Riverside. So look forward to his uh, efforts in, in the back of the house. And another staffing update, Hernan Rojas is here. He's helping with the audio visual as well as communication specialist, that is his title. He'll be helping with the recordings, the videos, Channel 97, working with Good Day Sun Lakes. And again, we are very fortunate to have another great addition to the team. Uh, Hernan has vast experience, and he is a veteran. So now, moving on to road work. Uh, the first portion of the project is complete. The next phase will be the RV slurry, which will begin May 8th. Staff will be advising the RV owners to vacate the lot, give them advance notice, when to vacate the lot for two weeks to allow for the seal coating and striping. Main golf course bunker project. Sodding of hole 15 was done. Sodding of hole 16 has begun, and hole 17 and 18 will be completed by Friday. Mr. Birchfield's goal is to have holes 10 through 15 open by next Tuesday, the 29th. After these segments of work are done, work will proceed to holes one through three. The main pool project. The project has been, was begun in March, and the project will be completed by May 1st before the pool season begins. And we have some miscellaneous administration updates. On-site staff has been working to update the website with information like ballot issues, legal disclosures, calendar events. We also have several videos like the Financial Corner posted on the website and Good Day Sun Lakes. Listening sessions will continue. They will be scheduled one per month on the first Monday of the month at 3.30 in the Sandwich. Now remember, Easter is right around the corner. We will be having an Easter brunch. It will be held here April 17th from 11 to 2.30. There is a flyer online as well as the calendar and it has the prices for that event. Lastly, please remember, if you have questions for Coffee with the GM, please use slccquestions at gmail.com. Thank you. And uh, do you have any updates for the subs? Okay. And we'll go to Jason. Thank you, Madam President. Good evening. This report here will give the community an update on actions that were taken by the board at their executive session meetings on March 9th and March 23rd, at which time litigation, member discipline, formation of contracts, and personnel matters were discussed. With member matters, the board reviewed four show cause hearings. The board met with a member regarding a personal issue. The board received Two, or reviewed two homeowner appeals of the safety committee. The board reviewed and approved a self-help of an abandoned property. The board reviewed one member request for a fee waiver. The board reviewed a member complaint. The board reviewed a member's monetary donation to upgrade the paperback library and directed staff to investigate costs. With legal, the board approved the executive session minutes. The board approved the F&B and golf receivables as of, as of February 28, 2022 and the assessment account receivables as of February 28, 2022. The board approved the February 28, 2022 delinquency report. The board approved to continue with the foreclosures on a couple properties. The board approved a foreclosure on lien and record the notice of default on the following. APN 419-292-019. The board met with legal counsel regarding a resident request. The board approved a bad debt write-off 
for $83,378.56. The board discussed the legal aspects of having a dog park in Sun Lakes. The board met with the association's auditor regarding, auditors regarding the 2021 audit. This item is on tonight's agenda for approval. With formation of contracts, the board re received updates from the management company on a number of items. The board approved a credit card expense for the billiards chairs that were approved at a prior open session. The board received and filed the Sun Lakes Country Club cash report from the February and March 2nd, 2022. The board reviewed and approved the February to March narrative and analytic report from Securitas, and the narrative will be posted on the website. The board reviewed and approved the emergency replacement of the North Clubhouse pool heater. This item is on tonight's agenda for ratification. The board reviewed and approved to bill the RV lot rentals and golf annuals at the beginning of the month instead of the end. This change for golf annuals will start in December 2022. The board reviewed and approved the Greenside Bunker Project. Again, this item is on tonight's agenda for ratification. The board approved management to investigate ways to humanely get rid of the geese on the golf course. The board discussed having food and drinks available for bingo. This item is on tonight's agenda for a final approval. The board denied moving forward with having parking stalls in the parking lot for rent for residents' commercial vehicles. The board approved the exemption of a few vendors from the First Service Residential Vendor Verification System. The board reviewed the Drought Tolerant Town Hall on February 28th. The board reviewed and updated the strategic plan and will continue to do so monthly. And the board approved holding more listening sessions, which are to be held on the first Monday of each month at 3.30 p.m. in the Sandwich. The next one will take place on Monday, April 4th, again at 3.30 p.m. in the Sandwich. And that completes the re report on executive session actions. Thank you, Jason. Okay, we'll go on to the City of Banning. Good evening. This very nice little statue was given to Sun Lakes Country Club by the Desert Edge VFW Post 233. It's their Patriotic Partner Award. So we have this, and we have some very nice certificates, uh, one from the city, one from our state senator, and one from the county supervisor. So congratulations. <clears throat> now for some news. Uh, Opportunity Village, that is the pallet shelter village that will be reconstructed at the east end of Bryant Street and it should be open around the 1st of June. It will be 20 pallet shelters to hold 40 individuals. It will be fenced with 24-7 security as well as an on-site manager. So we learned some lessons from that and we've got it under control. We're also going to be rallying community resources to deal with people who are not in the village. Now, what can you do to help? Number one, you can put you can issue a no trespass on your property. Now this is especially for the people who live on the north side whose properties back up to the field and the golf course. It is also for people who back up to streets. It's very simple. You fill out a form, and I'll give the form so it's available at the administration. You fill out the form and you file it with the police department. It's good for one year. The second thing is you post a no trespassing sign. And the third thing and the most important thing is you have to be willing to press charges if someone is arrested on your property. The nice thing about this is if you're not home, you're on vacation, and a neighbor sees somebody on your property, the neighbor can call the police and the police don't have to contact you because you filled out this form. If you are not willing to press charges, it's sort of like a dog with no teeth. He'll bite you, but he won't hurt. You need to be willing to do all three. So I'm going to give these to Jason for you to have. Okay. 
The second thing you can do is do not give anything to anyone on the street. That includes money, bottles of water, clothing, anything. It's called being responsible and being compassionate. What you should do is give your resources to organizations to help the people on the streets, such as Carol's Kitchen, Table of Plenty, Help, Faith in Action, your local church. That way, those that do not want to participate in getting off the street will have to leave the area. We'll just make it uncomfortable for them. We will help anybody who wants help, but for those individuals who refuse help, they need to leave the area. So file your no trespassing paperwork and don't give anything to anybody on the street. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mary. Okay, we'll go to the sub-associations. Anyone here from Lakeside? Lakeside 2? How about the Fairway Villas? Madam President? Yes. If you don't mind, I would just like to give an update with the subs. Yep. Uh, the subs are currently having their elections. Fairway Villas had their election last week. I'd like to congratulate Diane Arhus and Janice Gamble on being elected to the Fairway Villas board. And I would like to thank Sharon Robinson for all of her time spent on the board and all that she did. We currently have Lakeside 2's elections tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. in the multi-purpose room. And Lakeside's elections will be on Friday at 1.30 in the multi-purpose room. And that uh, is about it with the subs right now. Thank you, Jason. Okay, Joe with the Delegate Assembly. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending. Uh, the assembly meeting was held on Thursday, March 3rd, and our agenda was led off by Michelle Walters giving us a resume of the awareness program. And it's a program that is ex going to be extremely important for our uh, complex. So I hope all of you get into the program and assist in any way that you can. That was followed by a report from HELP. The director, uh, Pat Frawley, was here and gave us a rundown on what they do and how they operate. After a report of the Food and Beverage Department and the Recreation Department and our charitable trust, we had a discussion uh, on the election. Please, everyone that hasn't cast their vote yet, please vote. I want to repeat that. Please vote. It is important, and it is important because if your district does not reach a quorum, that's 50% plus one, then the delegate or the alternate delegate, the two that attend, can vote your entire district at their discretion. Now, some of our votes are, our districts have 180, 200 votes, uh, 125 votes. So it's important that each district reach a quorum so that we can have a vote of the people that reside here at Sun Lakes not at the discretion of one person for the district. Okay, I think that's important. We had also uh, an explanation on how I set up the agenda for the assembly meeting each month. I get phone calls from residents. I get emails and phone calls from delegates or alternate delegates suggesting topics. Those topics, if they are of real value to the community, I place them on the, on the agenda and we discuss them and so on. That's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Okay, well now we'll go on to the committee's uh, bingo advisory committee. How about the common area advisory committee? Thank you. 
EPEP, uh, the Golf Advisory Committee. We always can count on Mike. <laughs> Some kind of. <laughs> Uh, good evening. I'm Mike Callahan. I'm chairman of the Golf Advisory Committee. Uh, for the past several years, the GAC has heard complaints that our sand traps were unplayable and poor condition, and that was a long-lasting complaint we heard many times over the last several years. Thanks to the master board and the tireless work of Mark Birchfield, a major renovation of our sand traps is currently underway. During this time, golfers are feeling the pain of hole closures and disrupted tee times. Please be patient. The quality of the renovation should be well worth the inconvenience. I might add that Mark has been approached by several golf course contractors and several golf courses in the Southern California area interested in the construction and design of our renovation. The work being done is state of the art and we will soon have sand traps that will be the envy of most golf courses in the area. I have one request to bring attention to uh, the board, and it is the GAC proposed replacing the cart path at the tee box on championship hole number seven. And I've fielded several uh, suggestions that when this hole is closed for bunker renovation, this would be a perfect opportunity to do this maintenance work. Okay. Uh, thank you for your consideration, and thank you for making Sun Lakes a wonderful place to live. Thank you, Mike. <coughs> The uh, Library Advisory Committee. How about lifestyles? Hello, I'm Linda Vieira, representing the Lifestyles Committee. The Lifestyles Committee wishes to thank everybody for their photos. They've received a lot of them. And the submissions from clubs and groups, we really appreciate it. The deadline for all submissions is the 6th of the month. Also, if you want to guess the joke of the month, your uh, deadline for that is uh, to email that in is also the 6th of the month. And the winner gets a $25 gift certificate to the restaurant. Also, many people have asked how to contact uh, Lifestyles. Uh, on the last page, on the inside of the last page, uh, there is contact information for any kind of submissions. A lot of people uh, want to put something in for friends that we miss, and uh, that uh, you can get all that contact uh, information on the back page, the inside back page. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Uh, there's no report for marketing uh, and communications, so let's go on to the Master Architectural Committee. How about the Recreation Advisory Committee? Good evening, Patricia. Good evening. Good evening, everyone, Master Bard, admin, and all you beautiful residents. Well, we've been having a good time around here in Sun Lakes because there's been an awful lot to do. So I hope you're all getting out and enjoying all the things that we've had. Um, I don't know if you got to go see Fritz Coleman. He's a pretty funny guy for a weatherman. Um, he had us laughing in the aisles. Um, so, And then we had our, our spring craft show, and we had all the beautiful merchandise and uh, the happy buyers, and everybody had a great time. And our COVID clinics are, are going to continue, and they have been well attended. The clinics will return on Thursday, uh, April 7, and again on Tuesday, May 12. It's really nice to have that here uh, close to home so you don't have to drive. They will be held in the ballroom from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on both days. The live, stri live stream, sorry, uh, Blood Drive will be held here on Thursday, May 12, and you can sign up for that at the reception desk. That's from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, and you can make an appointment, and walk-ins are also accepted. So, um, upcoming things for us to look forward to. The Classics of Rock and Roll will be in the main ballroom on April 8th. That's right around the corner at 7 p.m., I understand that this is a must-see tribute to the champions of rock and roll. 
rock and soul, sorry. And on stage will be Aletha Franklin, Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry, beautiful dancers, they say, and music and laughs, and that's $20 per person. Uh, this is a new feature. It's the Sunday uh, co afternoon um, concert series, and the first one will be the Firebird Brass Quintet in the ballroom on Sunday, April 24 at 2 p.m., and that's $12 per person. The quintet will be playing your favorite classical and Broadway hits and swing from the big band era and jazz favorites. And the guest vo vocalist will be Sheila James, who is one of our residents. And better come out for this one because it sounds like a lot of fun. Then we have the world-renowned Elvis Presley performer, and his name is George Thomas. And the show will be on May 13th, 7 p.m. in the ballroom, $25 per person. Evenings on the veranda will begin on June 1st, and we know everybody loves to do that. Um, so we're all looking forward to that one. Another popular event coming up is our Music Under the Stars. That is on Saturday, June 25th. So pack up your golf cart with your food and your drink and come and enjoy your your uh, neighbors and friends out on the driving range and listen to the music. And then we have some fun things to try, classes on how to take and edit photos on your smartphone. On two Saturdays, April 2nd and April 9th, at 10 a.m. in the Arts and Crafts Room. Um, that's probably a good class to take. I play around with it and I do fair, but I could do better. Getting close to the return of the popular ice cream socials. The first one will be held in the Sandwich at 2 p.m. Three scoops for three bucks. You can't hardly beat that. And very, very friendly servers from the Recreation Advisory Committee. And then we have uh, the Community Shredding event comes back on May 20th. This is a date change, so if you've already got it on your calendar, don't forget to change it, uh, May 20th. And it's $4 a box, and that's from 9 to noon in the front parking lot. And then, of course, the garage sales are going to be returning, and they'll be held on the first three Saturdays in May from 8 to 4 p.m. Check your lifestyles for the dates of the, your area. Uh, there are too many to list, and you won't remember them if I told you. Um, trips, we have Meridian Guided Travel Tours, and they have several trips going out. Um, a trip to Paris, to a trip to Napa Valley, Switzerland and Germany, Yellowstone and the Grand Tetons. Um, Premier World Travel has several, several, Magnolia Trail and the heart of Texas, Athens and the Greek Islands, the Oregon Trail and Portland Rose Festival, Canadian Rockies and the Glacial National Park. Silver Lining, which is our, uh, the company that is doing our day trips for us, and sometimes a multi-day trip. Uh, they have the Pageant of the Lord going out on April the 3rd. I understand that's similar to um, the event at the uh, Pageant of Masters. I haven't seen it, but it sounds like it's pretty much the same thing. So have you seen it before? No. It's supposed to be really, really nice. And then the Carlsbad Flower Fields, April 6th. April's right around the corner. And then brunch on John Wayne's yacht. So uh, that's April 21. And Prescott in Sedona, Arizona on April 24th through the 27th. And that includes a lot of wonderful things to do, too. Kentucky Derby Day at Santa Anita Park. And I'm told that that's a really fun thing because everybody dresses up, the ladies wear their hats, and everybody bets and, you know, want to wait your favorite horse to win. That's on May 7. And then for all of these trips, the inquiries, your reservations, and questions, please contact the travel agency that is hosting the trips. The flyers are in a rack at the reception desk. Our, our recreation department, we don't have all that. We don't have that, in, well, we have it to share, but you can find it easily by getting a flyer. So we'd appreciate if you do that. And then we would like you to check your Channel 97 for more news. Good day, Sun Lakes. That's a quick one to, to find out things quickly. I enjoy that one. And your lifestyles and our Sun Lakes website for more information. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. How about the RV storage? Restaurant and lounge? <laughs> 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 
And last but not least, the Safety Advisory Committee. Good evening. My name is Bill Bass. Uh, I'm a chairman of the Safety Advisory Committee. Uh, Securitas has been working more closely with the uh, district delegates to help with the area concerns, such as trespassing and speeding. They also will be patrolling with their uh, flashing lights on from dusk to dawn in order to be more of a deterrent for the trespassers or speeders. Two people have been arrested by Benning police for by violating past warrants. There's been a high volume of traffic of realtors looking at the eight empty houses, and they must call ahead to get the proper passes. They're creating quite a bottleneck up there. Paving will begin shortly. And as we just heard, uh, looks like it's going to be after the RV in May. We'll be adding some other requested uh, speed ops at that time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. <clears throat> OK, we'll move to the consent agenda. Um, are there any items that would like to, that the board would like to pull from the consent agenda at this time? Yes, I recommend that we pull item number E, charter approval for the finance ad hoc committee. Okay, any second on that? I second that. Okay. Okay, with that, um, pulling item E, will uh, the consent agenda will approve A, B, C, D, and F. Do you have a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda? I, I make a motion. <laughs> Go ahead, right up to you. I move that we approve the consent of agenda minus number E. I second her motion. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay, this is what we just did. We approved the minutes from the February 23rd um, open session meeting. We uh, received and filed the full financial packet for, for the month of February 28th. And then uh, we uh, authorized uh, to place liens on the accounts that Chris is going to read right now. Thank you, Madam President. Those accounts are 00. 08-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1360-01-1
that uh, they spoke to us about today. In 2020, current assets were at 13.3 million. And in 2021, the current assets were at 14.2 million, an increase of 984,000 from last year's current assets. So we're in good shape. Golf increased from 1 million in 2020 to 1.2 million in 2021. And the 2021 track is very close to what we had in 2019. The auditor did some analysis to compare our financials with other like properties. And here are just a couple of the results. Um, in the food and beverage gross profit, Sun Lakes was at 63.3%. A property similar close to ours was at 56.6%. Um, merchandise gross profit in Sun Lakes was 26.1%, and again, a like property was 12.5%. The auditor said, job well done, especially with the Sun Lakes receiving no government COVID relief funds. Oh, we did very well all on our own. And the auditors had just great comments to say about Blanca. She's the Sun Lakes um, financial analysis, analysis person. They commented that this was the best audit that they've had. So it was a good report. Sun Lakes did well. Thank you, Linda. And now what will happen is this uh, final report will be sent to the printer and then will be mailed to the homeowners. So you'll be getting that here in the near future. Um, we removed number E and then the, recommend, uh, the recreation committee recommended, uh, actually they went through their charter and made some changes and updates. Uh, the highlights uh, of those changes are to remove, they want to remove members may volunteer to be day trip escorts. They added to work with the recreation director on the agenda. They added to send committee minutes to the AV communication specialist, and they also added to form an ad hoc decorating committee for the clubhouse decorations. Okay. We, um, there were some delegate resignations. The following members have resigned. We thank them for their service. District 13 alternate district delegate Carol Weirda and District 20 District Delegate Sandra Caton. And then uh, the Chair of the Delegate Assembly has re uh, recommended the following members be appointed to the following positions. Term ending dates for these positions are April 13th, 2022. Uh, District 13 Alternate District Delegate will be Pat Wiltshire. District 20 uh, District Delegate will be Barbara Luna and District 20 alternate district delegate will be Sue Roberts, and that is actually to have uh, district representation at the elections. Okay, I'm gonna go back to um, E, the charter approval, and I'm going to move that we table this until the next uh, open session. I right. second that, and that's the charter approval for the finance act. Right. We say all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that will be uh, talked about at the next uh, open session. Okay, now we're going to go to the board reports. Linda? Board treasurer report, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, looking at the nation's economy for the last two months, not knowing how much food, water, gas, electricity, et cetera, are going to cost, our overall revenue for the month of February was $7,200 to the good. Sounds like a small amount, but we're in the black, so that's the good part, okay? Um, utilities such as electricity, gasoline, and water are continuing to increase monthly in Sun Lakes. Operating expenses for gasoline has doubled from 8,600 in January to 15,000 in February, and we're all feeling the crunch at the gas pump so we can recognize the increase. Um, water has again increased in the common areas of Sun Lakes. In January, it was 11,000, and in February, came in at 16,000. Um, the common area includes everything but the golf courses, so if you get a picture of how much that is um, being watered. 
the Recreation Department had an increase of $2,600, and that's because the Queen concert came in a little bit higher than what was expected. Um, but overall, they're on track with their budget. Uh, Securitas was 8,000 under budget, but this will increase when a job vacancy is filled and with summer approaching, the additional expense for pool monitors will impact that budget. Janitorial services have increased um, $2,500 each month for January and February. They're passing along their increases for supplies and gas along uh, to us. Residents are paying their HOA accounts with credit cards and the bank fee structure for using a credit card has increased, so that's costing us a little bit more. Legal collections have doubled, and again, based on the current economic clim climate, some re residents are having a difficult time paying their accounts. Administration is working to assist these residents in bringing their accounts up to date. The golf course maintenance department takes care of two golf courses and has a staff of 25 employees. Power to the irrigation pumps has been consistent at $6,400, but we can again expect that to increase as summer approaches. The water for the golf courses is being estimated because the city of Banning has changed their billing uh, system. Administration is working with the city to get a better handle for accurate billing and not having to estimate how much water is being used. Along with increased power for the irrigation system, the repairs on the irrigation system have gone up $2,000 for both January and February. Bottom line of the golf courses maintenance for January and February is down though about 10,000 from the budgeted amount, so it's in the black. The golf shop operation sales continue to increase Non-annual golfers are playing more golf as well as residents using the driving range. The golf, co golf shop operations continue to do better um, than budgeted. January and February were $30,000 over the budgeted plan. Um, the annuals for 2022 are just nine short of 2021. And so that's not really bad. The golf continues to operate in the black in the black and that's a huge thank you to brian and his staff that pro shop is doing an amazing job for the restaurant lunch continues to be doing better than dinner and we do welcome chef chris with his extensive culinary skills uh, to sun lakes chef chris trained in naples italy and we can already see positive comments from residents who had breakfast on sunday some are even taking their edible flowers that garnish their plate. They've taken them home and placed them in water so they can remember the great experience they had in the restaurant. As banquets slowly come back, restaurant revenue will increase. Thomas is hoping to have the sand wedge open by April 20th, and to start it will be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The lounge will also be open um, starting April 26th. That's a Tuesday. Our regular meetings with department heads are helping us see how they're doing with all the unknowns in the economy. Don Day approached us last open session about a graph plan. Um, he asked if we would look at that and I'm going to invite Don up to talk about um, the graphs he has put together. Good evening, everybody. I'm really excited to be here to share the progress that I've accomplished with the board and the administration towards this project. A Little bit of background. I've lived here about seven years and always found that financial reporting a little bit lacking for a resident to follow. I think, I'm sure we have great financial reporting for the financiers and the board that has time to go through them. But as a resident, being retired, I don't think we want to be financial PhDs. We just want to know what's going on. Are we on budget or not? We used to get the financial reports and the lifestyles, and I found, I personally found them a little bit difficult to follow and uh, see trends. 
they're a little bit cumbersome. Um, the other thing that I thought was missing, and probably the most important thing in the financial reporting, is what is going to be done to correct the negative variances in the various departments that are not doing well and having problems. So that is a background, kind of why I started looking at the project. As Linda mentioned, at the last board meeting, I offered to prepare a graphical presentation of key statistics for the community, for the board and administration. The following week, I met with Chris, Jason, and members of the board to review some graphs that I prepared as I analyzed costs for the restaurant and the lounge in 2019. At this meeting, it was agreed that I would go forward with the plan and the project. With Chris, Jason's support, we identified 13 key statistics that represent some of the most important features in the financials that we control on a, on a, on a regular basis. I'm excited to report that in less than four weeks, with the help of the board and administration, we have completed those graphs for the 13 key statistics. They're presently posted on easels in the back. Um, they're here to be presented for you guys, all 35 of you, to see and to review. I'll be in the back of the meeting if anybody has any questions going forward. A little explanation on the graphs. I know people online don't see the graphs. That will happen, I hope. Each graph is a simple line graph with two lines. One line is the budget by month for the year, and the second line represents the actual amount by month for each for, for the year. The only thing we need to understand when we look at this financial reporting is the actual cost line should be below the budget line. The actual sales should be above the budget line. There are numbers at the top of the graphs to show you exactly what the financial data reported, but we don't really need to look at the numbers unless if you're so inclined to do further analysis on your own. All you need to do is see is the line on the right side of the budget. The data presented on these graphs includes actuals for 2021 through December and January actuals for 2022. Going forward, these 21-22 graphs I'll have posted in the lobby for residents to review while we're preparing new graphs for 2022. Who cares about 2021? I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of done with 2021 and 20. So that, that's the plan. Um, the, the plan going forward, once we've had time to review this part of the project, is to focus on the current year, 2022, We'll have graphs presented to show the budget for each month uh, from January through December. And then as each month is completed, the actuals will be posted to show where we above or below plan on the financials. Uh, Good Day Sun Lakes, Lee and Bob have done an outstanding job presenting electronic data to our residents. Unfortunately, as far as I understand from the latest uh, posting, we only have about 1,500 residents signed up for Good Day Sun Lakes. With 5,500 people in the community, uh, you're all missing a lot of valuable information. There's financial information being presented, there's restaurant menus being presented, there's activities being presented, and it's such a small percentage of people. Um, I also feel attending board meetings is like voting. If you don't attend, if you don't vote, you really don't get a really good say in what happened in the election. If you don't come to a board meeting, you're not aware, you don't get your input into agenda items, and you really don't have a lot to complain about if you don't attend. But come, come have some food and drink and uh, we'll have a great meeting. We have great department managers here. I think some of the things Linda just mentioned this evening about the golf course, um, if you look at the graphs in the back, uh, you will see very clearly that um, the golf course management has done a very good job relative to plan. Golf course maintenance is a big number, but it's pretty much on track with, within plus or minus. Um, Thomas, we're excited to have him back in the restaurant, one of our major focuses. It's a big revenue stream, and if we don't do well in the restaurant, it's a big hit to the community. Thomas inherited a really tough situation with being closed down for two years due to COVID, false starts and uh, high food cost, high labor cost, but I think he'll get the job done as we go forward. The goals I have, 
How many people here know what our water cost is on the golf course and how many gallons we use? I don't either. Uh, but one of the things in discussing with Chris, uh, I will create two new graphs tracking water usage and cost by month, and that will be forthcoming. So we'll all at least know what the impact of water will be. My other goal is I'll work with the new board administration and hopefully the reinstated Finance Advisory Committee to work on this graphical format to roll it into a financial report that all residents can see, all residents can understand, even though they're retired. I will encourage the new board to find space in the Lifestyles magazine for improved financials so that all residents, even those that aren't computer savvy, uh, can see. Everybody has a right to see the financials and uh, that whether they're computer savvy or not. But that's, uh, that's what we've done so far. Please look at the graphs and uh, I'm expecting and hoping that the board will uh, authorize getting these things rolled out onto channel 97 and Good Day Sun Lakes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Don. And I also want to thank you because I know you worked on them when you're on vacation in Yuma. So thank you so much. And these graphs will be published and so that everyone can see them and we'll put out that information. So again, a lot of work, Don. Thank you so much. End of my report. Thank you, Linda. And thank you, uh, Don. Much appreciated. Okay, we'll go to new business. Uh, the first uh, Item is the Recreation Committee request to modify the room reservation policy and the rules and regulations. The, uh, I'll give you a little background on this. The Recreation Advisory Committee presented the board with proposed changes to the room reservation policy last month. The board tabled this item since, they were not since we were not clear on the parameters listed in the uh, proposed amendments. The committee has provided clarification and has now resubmitted their recommendation. The only clubs and groups that would take priority are the ones doing multiple day shows at Sun Lakes. The four months leading up to a show, they can practice up to four days a week. If approved, this will be added to the draft updated rules and regulations that will first be sent to the board and then sent to legal before going out for a reading to the community. We've actually been waiting for this to be finalized so we can get the rules and re regulations changes put to bed. So. Right now, I'm going to uh, call for a motion to either approve or deny the changes for the room reservations. I make a motion we approve the modification for the room reservation policy for rules and regulations. Second. Okay, open for discussion. Any discussion from the members? <laughs> Good evening, Master Board. Uh, my name is Michelle Walter. I have a question. Does it mean that these groups or the performers are going to have first choice all the time, and meaning that none of us will be able to get the ballroom or? No. I'll have just Jason answer that for you. Thanks, Michelle. Um, it would just be those groups like the Follies, the Corral, um, the Lats Entertainment, or Sun Lakes Playhouse, sorry. Um, it would only be those events. So their normal events and everything will be in line just like everybody else. It's just those multiple day performances dates. So that's all it is. Just the days that they're performing. Co correct. And anything leading up to that. So that's why we restricted them back. So um, you're giving them four months? Correct. Right now they're practicing six months in f before show. Okay. So my question is that if we need to get the... Um, the ballroom or we mm -hmm. need to get one we can't get it because they're going to have it not necessarily well, they, if they're, they, if they're limited them they're limited to the whole ballroom two months prior which is about what they're doing now okay but again you're still giving them priority and you're not giving us the same priority if we've got some kind of a major event going on but michelle you'll you will have your dates in before 
but Correct. I will get bumped if they need those dates. Yeah. Correct? Are, are you are no. you are you asking as like the tennis club and oh, yeah. young at heart? Are you tennis asking club, young at heart, um, community awareness? Community awareness at that time will be a committee, so committees have priority over the club and groups. Okay. Um, as far as your clubs that you normally have, I wouldn't see much of a difference between what is currently happening now and what would happen here. Well, the only okay. thing that you're going to see a change of is they'll be able to get their performance dates in first for those multiple day performances. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. I have a motion to uh, approve the changes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 4-0. Okay, we have the next one is the recommendation from the Safety Advisory Committee. Um, on January 24th, the Safety Advisory Committee voted to recommend the Board of Directors approve the following items to better improve the safety of Sun Lakes Country Club HOA common areas. Speed humps to be installed in the following locations, um, east of 4965 Rolling Hills Avenue in District 17. West of 5970 Myrtle Beach Drive in District 22. South of 1948 Riviera Avenue in District 19. East of 5211 Savannah Drive in District 9. And then stop signs to be installed at the intersection of Rio Bravo Drive and Riviera Drive in District 19. And at the intersection of Bradley Boulevard and Birdie Drive in District 23. The Safety Advisory Committee understands that the installation of stop signs may require placement in homeowner maintained yards. It is suggested that if the board wishes to approve these items that the affected homeowners are contacted prior to any, be, uh, any work being started. The funds for this item, if approved, will come from existing reserves. Um, it is estimated that the work will cost no more than $6,000 in total. And there's a, uh, we have a community map to show where all this information is. So I'll entertain a motion for approval or denial. I move that we accept the Safety Advisory Committee's recommendation for stop signs and speed bumps. I'll second that motion. Okay, open it up for discussion. I do have a question on that. It says, am I, it says that the Safety Advisory Committee understands that the installation of stop signs may require placement in a homeowner yard. What if the homeowner says no? Do we need to have that conversation prior to approving this? What, <clears throat> what we've done is uh, get permission from both neighbors across the street from each other where that speed hump would be going. You've already done that? Yes. Okay. How about the stop signs? The stop signs. Stop signs were requested, and I have one correction. Instead of uh, Bradley and Birdie, it's Bradley and Myrtle Beach. Bradley oh, and right. Myrtle Beach. Yeah. Okay. okay thank you. We'll make that correction. Right. So I'm still concerned that you know, if one of the homeowners says, I don't want to stop sign in my yard, sorry, then what? No, we don't. Yeah, then it comes back to us, correct? Okay. So even if we approve it now and they tell us no, that it would so, come back. So right now, what the, this, for clarification, this is a recommendation from the Safety Advisory Committee on these areas. If the board says, yes, we agree, move forward, then we follow up with those homeowners. And then if there's an issue, it comes back to the board. Okay. Thank you. My biggest concern, I have the, uh, my comment is that um, People race up to the speed hump, slow down, go over the speed hump, and then continue to race and go on. So why are we spending the money to put speed humps in on streets when people run? I'm, I mean, they just, it's kind of sad, actually. We have a speed limit of 20, uh, 20 miles an hour on most streets, 25 on Country Club Drive, and we can't s stay there. I, I, I don't really see. Um, what the speed humps are going to do, but this is just my own opinion. I watch, let's race up there, we'll slow down, go over it, and continue <laughs> racing on. And yep. it's like, okay. So are they really going to deter it? I don't know. Any other comments from the board before I open it up to the members? I'd like to, um, Bill, what, is, have you, what have you heard about, or what can you tell us about the speed bumps and 
are people like doing what Marsha said, like racing up and then continuing on, or are they trying to behave themselves? And I guess I agree with Marsha. I'm trying to decide if one speed hump in the middle of a road is going to affect the whole traffic plan. I can only see an improvement. Mm -hmm. Not that that's going to be a hundred percent. Okay. But uh, and and we have speed humps, not speed bumps, which are frame benders, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, we want speed humps, but it has has been successful. That will stop everybody. You know? Okay. I if if and of course let the members speak, but. If the board is concerned with that, the, the request from the committee, there is technology actually that is, can be placed on certain light poles and everything that can get uh, directional speeds coming to, going away. That technology then can be moved to different locations of the community, and then you can get recorded data for hours of the day, say uh, midnight to one o'clock, how many are counted and the average speed. So you can then determine if you're concerned, sorry, I'm turning around to the computer, but if you're concerned about that the speed bumps may not, or speed humps may not be uh, accurately placed, utilization of some technology around uh, streets and everything and moving it around can then give you uh, statistical data that will then help the board then make a, an educated uh, decision on that. Do you have any idea of the cost of those? Actually, of that no, I, I, there are a couple of vendors. There was a law seminar and a couple of vendors with the technology that have that, also with the speed signs and the ones. Uh, but this portable one, I don't have a price. I am actually trying to meet with this uh, vendor uh, that you can either rent or buy. But it's, it's similar to the strips, but instead it, it gives you the, the, these boxes that can then attach to certain areas to get that. Data. Kind of like a laser. And then, then they can give you graphical data. I saw the, the uh, data exported. Um, so I know the technology is there, and it might be beneficial for the community to go down that road mm -hmm. before putting in signs or, or humps that may be in the wrong area. So can we table this now until we get da uh, well, uh, data? Right. I'd, I'd let the, yeah. for, for order, you've already made a motion and second. I'd let the, the members, members talk and then just then go ahead and vote on that. Okay. Item and then it would come back at a future date. Okay. Okay. No more no more comments from the board. Or yes, I, I I think it is somewhat of a deterrent. I mean, how many humps and bumps do we have here already? And they're coming from request from the the residents. This is just not us arbitrarily deciding. Well, there's none in that uh, roadway. This comes from the residents' request that speeders are there and they want them. Uh, we're, we're getting. Uh, Four, four humps for six thousand dollars. I think that's that's uh, that's pretty good. The uh, uh, I, I think we should uh, we should consider it. You still want to measure what's happening. You're always going to have speeders. You can't eliminate that. But uh, I, I think we should honor the request from the residents in these particular locations. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Mr. Perkins. Good evening. My name is Paul Perkins. Um, I'm looking at this agenda. And I don't know where all the information's at. Do you have the information of what the streets that they want to do or, or anything else? It's all being presented here. It's not available to us that I'm aware of, is it? Is it available somewhere? No. I'm sorry, at this point, you should not be voting on anything until you make the information available to the, <clears throat> to the members of, of this uh, association. Just because it's available to you guys doesn't mean anything. I mean, some of us like to know what streets are available, uh, what you're going to do, what you think you're going to do, where you're going to spend money. Um, this whole agenda has a problem. We'll talk about different parts of it later on. Thank you, Mike. I'm Mike Volz. I live at 5970 Myrtle Beach Drive, where the uh, I'd like to have a uh, speed bump. We're right next to the South Clubhouse, right next to a bank of um, 
mailboxes. Uh, we have people, uh, we're right next to the exit of a parking lot at the South Clubhouse, okay? I live directly in line with that, and I, you don't need to spend money on this particular item, because I can tell you right now, I've seen more close calls than uh, I can count, okay? I've had them myself, and I requested this speed bump for the safety of everybody in Sun Lakes, okay? It's not just for my benefit or whatever. All my neighbors agree, and uh, that's all I wanna say. Uh, we need a speed bump there, thank you. Okay. Never haven't done this before, this should be interesting. My name is Tom Boyle, and I've been thinking about your speed limits for the last couple of months as I walk my little doggies around the, the facility. We expect everybody to obey by 25 mile an hour on Country Club Drive, Glen Eagle, 20 mile an hour is on the residential, I believe it's 15 on the condos. But you know what, we do a great job of hiding that information walk around this community and you take a look as to where you see signs that posted what your speed limit is there ain't any oh we may have a little sign like this i'm in a car i'm watching out for walkers i'm watching out for golf carters and i'm trying to stay within the boundaries of the street and i'm supposed to look at that i'm a visitor and you've got this little sign that says 20 miles an hour ain't gonna happen i think we need to do a better job and i don't know what that is i don't know what that is but I think we need to do a better job of advertising on our streets what our speed limits are. Thank you, Tom. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, I have a first and a second to approve. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll say aye, reluctantly, but I will say aye. <laughs> uh, uh, opposed? Opposed. Okay, so that is 3-1. Keep in mind, and I'm going to address the agenda piece here real quick. We see this agenda basically the same time, you know, that you see the agenda. The information that's on here is the information that I just read to you. That's what we see at the time of when the agenda is posted when we see it. It goes out at basically the same time. So the information that's out there is what we see. On the agenda itself, does it give the information, Chris? It does not, does it? It doesn't have a picture, but does it have the information on the? Okay, all right. Where's Paul? Point taken, Paul. We'll see what we can do. Okay, the next um, agenda item is the funding for the uh, championship course bunker renovation. And at the January 26th ex uh, executive session, the board approved moving forward with Earth Sculpture as the contractor of the Greenside Bunker Project, which is a third party contract. Um, the, we have the final agreement that was reviewed by legal counsel and agreed upon by the vendor. The total amount of the project will be um, the earth sculpture agreement for the bunker effort labor and materials is $256,681.95. The bunker liner, which is the Sun Lakes Country Club direct purpose, uh, purchase is 55000 394,028. The sand, which is also a direct purchase from Sun Lakes, is 60,801.15. There's a contingency plan of 5.4%, which is $20,500. So the total project expenditure is three, uh, $393,557.38. The project will be funded by the Repair and Replacement Fund. Uh, the board approved the agreement and authorized the work to proceed. This is just a formal approval to utilize uh, the repair and replacement funds for the project. So I'll entertain a motion, please. I move that we accept this um, 
total expenditure. Total expenditure. There you go. <laughs> Three hundred ninety-three thousand five fifty-seven thirty-eight. And I'll second that. Uh, open it up for discussion. Yes, my my concern is that we originally started with a different company. It was Golf Grip. And then they failed to do the work, so then we got a, a, another bid from Earth Sculpture, and w the bid did not include any contingency. So now they're coming back for another twenty thousand dollars, five hundred for contingency. But they're halfway through the project. I will vote for it. It needs to be approved. We don't want to stop it in the middle because this is very important stuff. But we're ending up uh, being like seventy thousand dollars over what was committed to the. Uh, uh, the reserves for this particular project. So I would like in the future to make sure that we do a better job of reviewing these contracts and, and making sure that uh, uh, we have a contingency included and we're trying to stay a little closer to the amount committed in the reserves. Thank you. Any other comments? I, you know, in, in uh, uh, when we approved this in the executive session, uh, originally Grip Golf was supposed to do it they bailed at the last minute. We were uh, uh, fortunate to get Earth Sculpture, who, from my understanding, is doing an awesome job. Uh, there was there was a um, oversight, I guess, of the contingency that came back up to us in another executive meeting. We approved that. So now the entire thing here is is uh, the three ninety three five fifty seven thirty eight. So that's how that all came about. Um, so, any other comments from the board? Okay, Mike. No. I just have one comment about the uh, about the uh, sand pit or our bunkers. bunker project. Okay, so I I uh, hadn't seen what had been going on, and um, I wanted to go out and see exactly how they were laying out because they've made changes to the golf course. Minor, thank God, because, you know, most modern day golf courses are what I call fly on, you know, you got to hit the ball up and over the traps onto the golf course. They don't leave the openings in front to run up. And uh, as old guys, <laughs> we don't quite make it in two. And our third shot, we like to run them up instead of flying them over the bunkers. <laughs> So I can say that uh, in the future, uh, I don't know where the design layouts came from because they took away bunkers and they added bunkers, okay? But um, somewhere along the line, I don't know where the input comes where they're uh, making modifications to the course as it is now, good or bad. That's it. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chris did, or Jason. Did we have a, a golf course architect? That was Casey O'Callaghan, and his firm uh, evaluated those uh, for this again for the play. This was just was discussed, uh, and so made some modifications, uh, the reshaping of it. But GAC probably will be, provide a better update on that. Uh, yeah, the uh, Casey O'Callaghan is the golf course architect who designed the bunkers. You and might want to get a, the layout. Get a little closer. Look, get a little closer the yeah. layout. And we really designed this with the idea of being a senior golf course community. The old bunkers were deeper. We had a lot of the uh, you know gentlemen are getting older and the ladies having difficulty getting in and out of the bunkers. As you will see when you go out to the bunkers, a lot of these areas have been contoured, so it's not quite as hilly around the bunkers and the bunkers will be much easier to be able to walk in and walk out of. And so a great deal of attention was paid attention to the clientele of the golfers that are playing on the course. Uh, so I think we, you will find there is a test bunker if you wanna try it. The test bunker is on the left-hand side of the driving range. That bunker was designed the same way as these bunkers are going in with the liner and the sand that's in there. So you can go and practice in that bunker. That bunker was put in a year and a half ago, and it has maintained its integrity for the last year and a half. Uh, everybody sees that it's a big expense. One of the problems we have here is that with a lot of the wind, the sand blows out. 
We also have uh, problems with the 30-year-old irrigation system we have that does a 360-degree watering. The drainage within the bunkers was poor. We had a lot of the silt and the dirt underneath the sand mixing in. So basically what they did is become concrete. With putting the liner in and the sand in, it will maintain the integrity of the course. Uh, about six, seven years ago, I believe, we added sand to the sand trap, so it didn't last very long. And at that time, you can see just the sand alone is between sixty and $70,000. We are hopeful that the integrity of these sand traps will last much longer, and we won't have to really replace sand every three to five years, uh, which had been uh, the schedule we had been on up to this point. Thanks. Appreciate that. <clears throat> okay. No further discussion. Um, I have a first and a second to approve the funding. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passed as 4-0. Okay, our next item is the GAC recommendation of signs on the championship course number four. Uh, the management team received a recommendation from the GAC regarding placing a sign warning pedestrians of golf shots that may be coming their way from golfers hitting off the fairway on championship hole number four. If you're not a, a, a golfer, it's between Riviera and Fairway Oaks, uh, and many folks walk from Riviera to Fairway Oaks behind the green, and errant shots could easily hit anybody walking there. Should they be walking there? Not necessarily. Can you stop them from walking there? Not necessarily. So the idea is to put this sign up. So I will entertain a motion to uh, approve this recommendation. I make a motion we approve the recommendation from the GAC on placing warning signs behind championship course hole number four. Second. Okay. I have a first and second. Any discussion on yes, this? Yes, I have a comment on this. Um, the letter that was sent recommends that we put a sign up that prohibits pedestrian traffic, and I don't agree with that. I think warning signs are fine, but like Marcia said, we can put a sign up that prohibits it, but how effective is that going to be? And it also mentions that there's a lot of blind shots up to the green. I play that all the time. I've yet to come into a location where it's a blind shot up to the green. So I can see up on the green, and I, I see people down there watching us to see if we can actually get on the green. <laughs> so have we ever had anybody here? I mean, I understand where you're coming from. I just think that warning signs are fine, but I certainly wouldn't put a sign up that prohibits any kind of foot traffic there because people are going to walk. They come up through the wild woods down there. That's it's right that what I call the wild land. And they're going to walk in there. So be, oh, warning them that, you know, look out for errant golf balls is a good idea, but I don't think we should put prohibit here. Mike, I, I need your um, what what exactly would you like on that sign? The verbiage. I know that I mean sometimes hearing it from you is a little uh, a warning sign would be fine. You know, there are out-of-bound stakes at the one area where part of the problem is there's a dog cleanup station on Riviera, <laughs> right where you enter that golf course. So a lot of people do walk their dogs in there. And there is an area of grass that's freely open for people to walk their dogs there. But once they get past the out-of-bound stakes, and it is quite a dip down there. Now, the guy's hitting from farther out than you ladies. I, I understand you can't that. see behind yeah. there. And so this really came about from some of the members and I mean, we could put up a sign that just says entering golf course area, that would be fine. The concern that we were getting from the golfers to the GAC was regarding liability issues. If I hit somebody with a golf ball, can they sue me or could they sue the HOA? And we thought just having some sign up there telling them, you know, non-golfers don't know that white stakes demarks a out of bounds right. area. But just having a sign there say entering a golf course area or something to that effect yeah. would then make it that they're entering at their own risk and that neither the HOA or an individual golfer would personally be held responsible if somebody should get hit. You know, if you do yeah. get hit, we haven't hit anybody, but if somebody should get hit, somebody could get seriously injured. Yeah, and okay. I agree with that. I just, your letter said prohibit, and, and that, I had a problem with that. 
We weren't stuck on the language. We just wanted to make sure the uh, master board was aware of some issues that came up from golfers regarding the liability involved there. If we didn't put any sign and were free from any liability, and that's clearly stated, that would be fine with the golfers as well. Mike, would it be going both from Riviera and from Fairway Oaks? Yeah, I, I think you would want it from both sides. Okay. Yeah. Entering from Fairway Oaks and then at the out-of-bound stakes that would uh, go in line with the wall there, you know, going up the fairway saying you're entering a golf course mm -hmm. at, that, okay. makes sense. at that area. Any other discussion from the board? Okay, any uh, discussion from the members? I, I couldn't sit there and listen to all of this. I think this is dumb. We live on a golf course. We have 18 holes on one side. We have 18 holes on the executive side. And there are probably 122 and a half hazards, if you want to call them, for people walking up and down the streets and what have you. Hole number four is no exception, I don't think. I think you could find a half a dozen or more along the streets. Um, we've gone 35 and some years and not had a problem. Why are we looking for problems now? People know they live here with a golf course, with two golf courses. They should be aware, and if they're not, that's their problem. Thank you. <laughs> if you want to make a comment, please come up to the microphone. I can look out my front window and watch all these people going from Fairway Oaks down that path. I can tell you there is an immense amount of people who walk that because they see the little valley on the other side and the pathway. That pathway is larger than any pathway we got anywhere. Okay, we need a sign up there. Having come within nine yards, I'm thinking about nine, eight, nine yards of bouncing my own ball off of a lovely lady and her little doggy on hole number 11 one day because she wanted to walk next to the green, but she was sorry. I wonder how sorry she would have had to bounce the ball off her head. <laughs> More importantly, if I had bounced it off the little dog, it would have killed him. Yes, I agree. We need a sign up there. Enter at your own risk. Because there are, I sit there every day. I can look out my window. People love to walk their dogs from Fairway Oaks down that path, and they disappear in that area of grass you're talking about. They disappear, and they also like to go maybe a little bit to the grassland. They think that's their walking area. It's big. It's wide. They don't picture that as being a golf path. We need a sign there because you may say we're not in liability, but I'm the golfer. She's a person I hurt. You tell her not to get mad at me. Her lawyer will tell me different. <laughs> Barbara Jesus. Good evening, board, admin. I just think it's a question for the attorney. If we're sitting here discussing it, I mean, we should go to the, the, the attorney to figure out do we really have an issue at all. Like, like um, Joe said, we've been here since uh, 1989 and now we're just trying to figure out if we've got any liability. I know if you own a golf course lot and somebody you know, hits the ball on your property, well, you could easily be sitting out there and get hit in the head. You're gonna go after the, the person who hit the ball if you can find them. But just as overall, is there anything in our CC&Rs or bylaws that, uh, number one, talk about the liability, and two, it's as good as anything else, take it to the attorney, get a final answer, and put it in the records. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Any other comments? Okay, anybody, you wanna change your motion, or are we good for where we are? We're good. Okay, we have a first and a second to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I'm going to say aye because I do know that particular spot is pretty crazy. Can be. I'll say aye as well. Okay. Uh, approves 4-0. Though, Mike, I think we need to get the signage verbiage 
and at the same time to uh, we can also uh, talk to Pete to to make sure that we've got the right idea yeah we'll talk offline thank you so much okay the GAC has been really busy <laughs> because I have another <laughs> recommendation from uh, the GAC uh, about trimming the trees between the ravine and the cart path off of hole number six on the executive course so I will entertain a motion on this one I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the recommendation from GAC about tree trimming and the ravine on the executive golf I'll course hole number six I'll second that okay open it up for discussion but my understanding um, there there's the ravine the, the bridge goes over the, the ravine and this is on the left hand side that they want to do the trimming correct because they have moved the in order for it to meet the SGA um, yeah what's that word rating they had to move the men's tee box back and that puts those trees directly in their line of of shot so they're trimming just on the left hand side not on the right the right hand side is in the line of the women's tee box no. <laughs> but we don't need that trimmed um, <laughs> yeah. okay any further discussion up here with the board anything from the members okay I have a motion to approve the trimming of the trees all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. four zero okay we have another recommendation from the GAC <laughs> giving you a bad time Mike sorry uh, the GAC would like to have an outside golf tournament on the executive course. This would uh, be for the Calamesa Breakfast Lions Club. The tournament will be held on Wednesday, May 18th or the 25th. Is that correct dates, Mike? Um, with an afternoon start time as to not to interfere with the Saturday morning. So, what, so do you want it on a Wednesday or a Saturday? They are a Wednesday that right when I, I have a, I have a conflicting day day of the week here I know the 18th and the 24th are fifth are Wednesday that's a Tuesday and a Wednesday then May 18th is a Wednesday and May 25th is a Wednesday so it's a Wednesday either either of those two Wednesdays <laughs> either of those two Wednesdays it's, okay it's May 18th is a Wednesday May 25th is a Wednesday right um, the Lions Club would produce their own liability insurance for the event. If approved, they would work with Brian Garlington to put it on the golf schedule. I'll entertain a motion for approval or denial. I'll make a motion. We approve the uh, GAC recommendation allowing the Calamesa Lions Golf Club to have a tournament either on May 18th or May 25th on the executive course. With an second. afternoon start time. Not, well, it doesn't say that. And yeah. I would second that just for. for it does on here with an afternoon start time. I, don't, I think I missed that when I was reading it. Is, I would second it for so we can have discussion. Okay, I have a first and second. I'll open it up for discussion. So it said when, it's, when we thought it was Saturday, it said in the afternoon so as not to conflict with the Saturday morning golf club. Is it an afternoon start time? Okay. This is on a Wednesday. So what time, is it an afternoon start time? Can you give us more information, Mike? Maybe that's the, what we need. Paul, we need Mike up there real quick. Yeah, so the, the Lions Club approached us. This is a charity tournament. All the money's going to charity. They are a uh, 503. Yeah, uh, so that's all set. Uh, the Lions Club had approached previously, Brian Garlington had approached the Men's Executive Club. They were all on board. The role of the GAC was just to give our approval to this function because it didn't interfere with any executive clubs the de time they were going to have it. Uh, they did the two dates here just in case the timing was with the pro shop. So that was for them to work with Brian as far as the timing with his pro staff uh, to work with them and get it set up. 
But yeah, my understanding, both those dates are Wednesdays, and I think Brian had decided, most of the golfers over there, uh, that he would have a shotgun start Wednesday morning for all the open golfers for Sun Lake residents, and then this would be a one o'clock shotgun start for the charity event, either that, you know, either of those two Wednesdays, whatever he came up with, uh, Brian, as far as what was the best day to hold it. Okay, Any thank other you. Questions? No, thank oh. you. Any other comments from the board? That kind of reinforced what I, questions I had. Paul. Um, one of the things that Sun Lakes has been doing for some time is giving away our resources, and I use that. I, I think we can be a, a good member and that type of thing, but I think we need to take a little bit of care and everything else. Previously, we had a high school that wanted to use our ballroom. We had no problem with that as long as they had a police officer here. Put the police officer up, they didn't want to use the ballroom. Not too long ago, we had uh, the hospital came to us to use their charity because they got charged by Morongo all of a sudden. They wanted to come here because we would be free. I'm saying that we need to have some basic charges besides telling people that they have to have insurance and that type of thing. The city did their state of the city here and charged $75 a seat. Now, we got to tear it down, got to put it up, we got to clean up after everybody. I'm just saying that this isn't for free. I think we need to set some costs for the usages of our facility. You can decide at that point then that um, if you want to reduce that cost somewhat, then you can, but you should be able to recover your costs at some point. Mike, I'm glad you came up. Um, okay. uh, uh, car, can, oh, just um, carts, where are they going to get all of their carts, and do you know how many players? Okay. Uh, this would be open to Sun Lakes residents, who most of them have their own carts, so they would use that. Uh, any of the outside guests who would be coming to participate in this, or younger guys from the Lions Club, they would walk the course, or uh, they would arrange with Brian if there were carts needed, or they would pair up with residents within Sun Lakes Country Club. So the carts were not going to be a problem. And it's not for free. Whatever the Lions Club is charging as far as raising the money for charity, that's over and above what the Greens fee would be charged. Okay. So everybody who's coming here who is not, if there's somebody, a Sun Lakes resident, if you have an annual membership, you don't have to pay a Greens fee because you've paid that with your annual membership. If, you're, if you participate in this charity golf tournament, you will have to pay a greens fee if you don't have an annual membership, or if you're somebody associated with the Lions Club, you would be paying a greens fee. So we're not giving the golf course for free. We're just gonna allow them, I'm not sure what they're going to charge for the event, because obviously they're gonna give some prize money or whatever, but uh, we will be getting greens fees from those who need to pay greens fees for the course. Thanks, Mike. The way it was set up by Brian. Yeah. We yeah. prove it. Okay. Kind of this point, this, this points out that we didn't get all the information. Okay, we are getting some money. Um, I think that this documentation that we have here is incomplete. Um, if we are expecting an X amount of people on the, on the green, how many, how much money are we looking at picking up? Does it kind of pay for it or? It, it would, they would, everybody that would golf would pay the greens fees just like if you went out there to golf normal. So every, we would get the green fees for the use of the golf course. And then whatever, and above and beyond that, whatever the charity wants to charge for um, being in the tournament would be up to them. So, so what you're saying, the contract that we're going to issue into the Lions Club, which is a contract, says that they're going to have to have X amount of insurance to cover this. It also means that we're going to get X amount of dollars back per each person that doesn't, that's not from Sun Lakes or whatever, that they're picking up for greens fees. Or are we collecting the greens fees when they come on? 
Good. They will pay the greens fees at th that particular day, would they not? I, I don't know how that's going to work out yet. But we will be reimbursed for the green fees. That, and that's what Mike's saying. But Brian will make sure that we get paid for the use of the golf course through the green fee, normal green fees. So this will be a contract, a written contract. That we have. It's Paul, I can't tell you that right now. I, I, I mean, I'm Better sure that. Be, it shouldn't be a handshake. I'm sure, I'm sure there will be something written. I think this entire discussion is out of order. Uh, never in the past has there ever been an advisory committee, a group, or a club recommended anyone from outside. I think in the letter, the request has always come directly to the board of directors. And the board of directors then would work with the restaurant if it has to do with the dinner, with the golf department, if it has to do with golf, and so on. And I think all of those details would have been ironed out and taken care of by the golf staff as they have been in the past. I think this item at the moment should be tabled and the protocol of the board working with the golf department should handle it that way. I have uh, no problem with uh, allowing our golf course to be used for tournaments. But it kind of raised a thought that I was thinking about earlier because I'm kind of old. I wake up in the middle of the night coming up with crazy ideas. But how much does a typical tournament generate in profit? Ballpark, anybody have any ideas? Oh. It would depend on if there's food and beverage affiliated with it. Okay. Well, my, my point is this. I mean, we have an item on the, um, the ballot for voting to find a way to fund um, legal fees, which may or may not be passed. But I look at Sun Lakes as, as some of the people have already alluded to. We have a lot of resources here. They're valuable resources. What about if we created a golf tournament, a fundraising golf tournament to fund legal fees? You know, regardless of whether the, um, the um, thing passes the vote or not, this is something that we could do right now. And we could open it up possibly. I mean, you guys can tell me I'm not, I just come up with the ideas, I'm not the legalese. But I think it would be great if we could do a golf tournament fundraiser, please use alcohol, and invite Four Seasons to come. We already know how to do tournaments with uh, people coming in from outside to carry their bags or pair up with residents. That's one idea. The other thing is, in favor of funding money for the uh, finance, uh, for the uh, advisory committee and making things for uh, legal fees, why can't we do some kind of a function and invite people to that and get paid for that? Uh, but wasn't really the topic on hand, but I thought I'd throw it out there for th food for thought and maybe do some fundraisers to raise money. Thanks. Michelle, are you coming up? Yep. Okay, Mike, what I understood in our GAC meeting was that a gentleman came to us, um, what was his name? Uh, yes, who is a Sun Lakes resident and is a Lions Club member and wanted to have a tournament here, would, would any of our golf clubs be opposed to that? And what we said, no, we would not be opposed to that. So not that GAC was recommending we open it up to everybody. He came to us and asked if our clubs would be opposed to having this tournament on a Wednesday in the middle of the afternoon one day. And we said, no, we'll bring it up to the board. And, and that's really how that started. OK, thanks, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly right. Normally, uh, people want to use the golf course for a charity event would make the proposal to the board. 
What the board does is then ask the GAC if it would be okay with all the golf clubs that are re represented on the GAC. What they did in this hand was try to do it at the same time, you know, in the interest of getting it speedily done. We're not the ones who's promoting this. We just said the GAC or the clubs represented by the GAC did not have a problem with them holding such a tournament should the master board approve it. And it was a resident that came to you. Okay. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, with this, we have a first and a second to approve the Calamasa Lions Club Golf Tournament on the executive course on either May 18th or May 25th. All in favor? Aye. 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 I, I appreciate all the discussion, but you, you know, the, 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 it was a resident uh, request. Okay, Lifestyles Committee recommendation. Um, the would like a member approval for um, updating the charter. They updated the ch we updated the charter at a prior open session. Sorry, the committee is asking for the approval of uh, Judy Garthwaite to be able to serve on the committee as past chair for the remainder of 2022. Her t uh, term would expire on December 31st, 2022. Um, and this is, I think, how they changed their charter. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve or deny. I move that we approve that Judy Garthwaite continues on the Lifestyle Advisory Committee as a past pe president through December 2022. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? Any member discussion? Okay, we have a first and a second to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 So passes 4-0. Um, the ratification of the emergency replacement of the North Clubhouse pool heater. The pool heater at the North Clubhouse has been limping along for some time now. The core has gone bad and required a re complete replacement. This was an emergency replacement and now will need to be ratified by the board. The cost for this replacement was $5,411.84 and will be funded from the repair and replace fund. Needed to be done in order for the pool to open on May 1st so that we could get, you make sure that it was nice and heated and warm for everybody. So I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the cost for the replacement of the pool heater. I'm looking at the information here that says that, I don't know if I can, it says it comes out of reserves. I did say that. Oh, okay. I thought. Please. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, emergency replacement of the North uh, Pool heater. I second. Okay. Open it up for discussion. Any discussion from the members? Okay. I have a first and second to approve the uh, cost of uh, the heater replacement for. $5,411.84. Uh, $5, All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 4 0. Um, the next comment, or the. Where is it? Oh, I, there it is. The Restaurant and Lounge Advisory Committee is requesting the board approve purchasing five. This is fake trees, I'll say artificial trees for the restaurant. The committee feels that this would warm up the room and make it a more inviting atmosphere. The trees would be five and a half to seven feet tall and would be put throughout the restaurant, filling some current voids along the walls. The amount of these trees would not exceed $3,000 and would include the tree and the pot. Um, I would, um, I'll entertain a motion. That this is a recommendation so we can Changes to the recommendation? You can amend the amend recommendation. It. Yeah. I, I recommend this matter be tabled and further investigated. Uh, I'm not that crazy about fake trees, and the, and the cost uh, is uh, excessive uh, considering the fake trees that they're proposing were 100 to 140 dollars. Five times that is not 3,000. But I, I think that we should look into it better, and. and uh, uh, get a uh, another proposal brought to us, including the option of maybe live trees if they're going to enhance it. But I would like to thank uh, on, Victoria for all of her. Uh, Let's get our second on there first yeah. before we go there. A second for discussion. 
Well, second to table, right? Oh, table, yeah. Second to table. I would so like to thank Victoria for her uh, involvement and creativity, you know, as the leader for the restaurant and lounge. She's come up with a lot of great ideas, and this has nothing to do with her. I think it just uh, needs a little further investigation, that's all. Okay, so I have a first and second to table. All in favor? Aye. 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 I did. Sorry, did miss it. <laughs> okay, the last, um, the last item is the bingo request. Uh, bingo committee is asking if they could have food and drinks available for purchase for non-members who come to bingo. This would include having a separate cost for members and non-members. Um, I'll entertain a motion on this one. I move to accept um, the bingo's request for food and drinks. I'll second that. Okay, open it up for discussion. I met with the, uh, the chairs of the bingo um, committee, and there's usually about 200 people there, and that's 200 people that are not, you know, getting food or drinks from our facility. Bingo has agreed to op have their own account so they can open an account and uh, guests can go to the portable bar and pay by credit card for their food and drinks. And they would pay a higher price than a resident. And then the resident you know, will have the same opportunity but pay what we re usually charge. Um, I think it's a great opportunity to get more income into the restaurant. And like I said, you've got 200 people sitting in here daubing numbers and drinking. It's a good thing. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? Uh, discussion from the members? Come on up. I didn't catch how you would charge the bingo person from outside. Uh, how would that all work? I'm standing next to the homeowner. Or I'm going to pay 250 for something, and then I'm charged 350. I mean, how's that going to work on the system? Glad you asked. With the new POS system, there you go. Um, that's one. Uh, we can do that, that will be available where we have uh, different charges for both. You have member charges and non-member charges with the new POS system. So that will be available at that time, at the time that we'll be ab able to start this. Dan. Dan Cummer for 1049 Oakland Hills Drive. Is the restaurant now going to be open on Tuesday nights? I uh, gave a report earlier that on April 26th, a Tuesday, that, they, that the lounge and the bar will be open. Let me repeat the question. Is the restaurant going to be open on Tuesday nights? And no, I said the lounge, the lounge will be open. is going to be open. Yes, in the lounge. In the lounge. In the lounge. In the lounge. Yes. Okay, I have a first and a second to approve. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 So that passes for. Oh. Okay. Got through that. Now we're open to member comments. Uh, the first one I have is Nita Cook. What you guys do, <laughs> what you guys do is amazing. I'm just uh, amazed. Um, uh, good evening. My name is Nita Cook, and I'm the district delegate for District 17. Um, I just wanted to say we're fortunate to have all so many volunteers that donate their valuable time to help uh, Sun Lakes be a better place. Um, no one group works harder than the master board. Um, they, they have the most hours, they, they have the most responsibility, and um, I just really admire all of you. So I wanted to take this time um, to thank you and let you know how we appreciate all of your hard work, your dedication, and the long hours that you put in. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Nita. Okay, next, Dan.
was looking at the budget increases from 2021 to 2022, it went up $1.157 million in terms of increased revenue. 60% of that increased revenue, 687,000, went to labor costs. In the admin office, they added one person, 1,747 hours. <clears throat> in 2021, they had eight people at an average salary. I know that this is not totally accurate, but it's the only way to compare it. They had average salary of $89,000 for those eight people. With the increase in 2022, it increased $204,000, with added, even with the added one person. Recreation department added 494 hours, no new staffing. The average per person increase was $6,000. The restaurant change decreased 2,990 hours and yet they had an increase per person of $2,800. Thanks, Dan. Paul Perkins. Good evening. Um, I've asked for several times in the past to have an app uh, for the iPhone or an Android uh, so that we can get into the Sun Lakes website information a lot easier than kind of hand pecking it in and hoping a password works. Um, my understanding is is that's been available for several years and I'd still like us to have it so I'd like to have an idea when we can get that. The other thing is is looking at the agenda tonight I've already mentioned this we can, we're not having any information. We have a, a board that tells us that they got the agenda just before they walked in. Wait a minute. You know, that's who's doing the agenda? Doesn't seem like we are, but I looked at the agenda for the executive meeting that they held in March. And it's kind of interesting. There's a whole bunch of areas in here, but I'll read one of them. Review, discuss, Act upon schedule of town halls and listening sessions. Behind it says we have a third party contracts. Are we hiring party planners or something like that? And that's in there. It's in there several times. I mean, it goes on. Uh, presentation for drought third party contracts. Yes, we have a third party contract for that. But some of the other ones in here, we don't. I think you guys need to look at your agenda and clean it up. Barbara. Barbara Jesus, did we uh, table the uh, fake tree thing? Yes, yes we, we did. Okay, so I did my own little survey on Facebook. I sent you all the information, so I'll just let you uh, read that. But um, I just kind of something humorous to do. But it was. And it seemed to me we had a fake trees before, but we also need to know if we we're only going to do five or six trees. So I assume that the um, the cleaning service would clean those for free or our employees would do them. <laughs> and um, actually out of 78 responses on Facebook, 44 people said no. And uh, there was a few who didn't make any comment, but then uh, about nine people said, it's okay with me. And the rest said, um, had their opinion about other things for the restaurant, which I won't go into here. The other thing is um, the infamous dog park. I think I caught uh, Chris say it was in executive session again. And I don't understand why still. So I would like the board to come up for a, um, give out an answer as to why you're having these doggy park discussions in executive session because it has nothing to do with an executive item. Unless you're doing a contract. 
Okay, so you're t so you're telling me you're that far along in the doggy park thing that you're doing legal and you're doing contractual work and you're doing something there. Okay, well, I, um, I'll just let it go at that. You guys know I've talked to you about that. But um, I, I would like to thank the board for their service also. I second the other ladies' comments, even though we don't always agree and we go at it sometimes. I do appreciate all the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. And Tom, did he leave? Tom Boyle? Okay, well, so we don't need Tom. Okay, that ends uh, member comments. We'll go ahead with uh, board comments. I'll start with you, Bob. Thank you. <clears throat> I want to thank everybody for their support during this past two years <coughs> on the master board. We've had some difficult challenges with uh, COVID, staffing shortages, uh, staffing shortcomings, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this next year to a return to normalcy, and um, we can use all of our uh, amenities in this beautiful community of ours. Uh, I encourage everybody to vote in this important election. Uh, vote for the candidate or candidates that uh, share your vision, but it's very important that you vote. Uh, we want to at least get the, the quorum in each, each district, as, as Joe has mentioned, that, that's very important. And then lastly, I want to mention uh, about the Community Awareness Program. We're having a great presentation here tomorrow afternoon from 1 to 3 o'clock uh, in, uh, in the ballroom here. We're going to have a, uh, a guest speaker Cynthia Mendez, I believe is her, her name. She's from the uh, Department of Social Service, and she's going to be talking about frauds and scams and really important things that are uh, good, to, good to know here in the community. We're also going to have two special guests. We're going to have Chief uh, uh, Matt Hamner from uh, Banning PD and some of his officers, and then we'll have uh, Mike Romero from Securitas. So if you're available tomorrow afternoon, 1 to 3, make sure you be here. It's, uh, it's an important program. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Linda? Um, thank you. Um, I wanted to just comment that 2020, during 2021, we were working on the, on the budget. It was very difficult, not knowing which direction to go, not knowing how much money to, you know, to look at to, to apply for food or gas or water or whatever. And we, I have to tell you, we worked many, many, many hours on that budget. So when we talked to the auditor today, and for him to give us such great compliments, and for him to tell us we're in the black, for him to tell us you know, that compared to other associations the size of ours, that we are doing really, really well, I want to thank the entire board and everybody else who helped work on that financial budget with us. We did good, and we look good. And so thank you, all the residents, thank you, staff, and Chris, because we did really, really well. I was looking at, I thought, oh no, what are they gonna say? So for them to come out and say, compared to other communities that we, that was, this was the best audit that they have done so far. I'm gonna piggyback a little bit on that. Um, part of that is the financial analyst that we have in place has um, kept records uh, maintain the financial uh, financial numbers and entries every month, freeing up Chris to do exactly what Chris is supposed to be, and that's to manage. So um, that was all a big part of why that audit came out uh, so successful as well. And I'm, I'll turn it over to Beverly. So we've, we've all been talking about the um, election, which is coming up. Your ballots will be counted on April 13th, Wednesday. And that is actually the annual meeting of members, as well as the election of the board directors, the district delegates, the alternate, alternate delegates, plus the two initiatives on the ballot. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what happens that day. Because I know when I first came here, I thought, oh, it's just, it's just vote counting, but it's not really. So it's an actual meeting. It is the annual members meeting. It is called to order at 9 a.m. here in the ballroom by your sitting board, the current board. There'll be a bit of business to talk about, some updates from the management. Shouldn't take longer than 10 or 15 minutes for that to happen. Then it's opened up for any member comments that they wanna make. Once that is all completed, the current board will recess that meeting while all of the ballots are being counted. And this year, we're back to having the ballots counted here 
So the inspectors of elections will actually be here to count them. They'll be set up in a stanchioned off portion of the ballroom. And because there are so many items on the ballot to count, this process could take three, four, five hours. We don't really know. So you're welcome to stay and watch them count the ballots if you would like, or you may go do your things that you need to do and come back a little bit later. So once all the ballots have been counted, now you, if you do leave, you might want to check back you know, periodically just to see where we stand. Because once the, count, the ballots have been counted, the current board will reconvene the meeting, which will probably be in the early afternoon. So you do want to check back, see where, where we're at. Once we have reconvened, the inspectors will give each delegate their district's ballot to vote and sign. This is what Joe was talking about. That ballot is then returned to the inspectors, and once they have all those ballots back and have certified them, they will then announce the winners for the board seats, the delegate and alternate seats, as well as the decision on the two initiatives. The members' annual meeting is then closed by your sitting board. The new board then will come onto the stage and they will open up the organizational meeting by the new board. At this time, the positions for each of the directors are voted on by this new board that you've elected. And once all of those have been assigned, the meeting is then closed. So it sounds like it's a long day, but I really encourage everyone to come, or at least part of it, and just see how this voting process works here in Sun Lakes. Um, and you know, it, it's very interesting to see that. So that's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, the board worked on and updated the strategic plan today, and that revised plan will be on the website before the end of the week. So that was one of the things that we said that we would talk about each time. So look for the, new, uh, the updated strategic plan on the website, probably by Friday. Um, if you have not received a ballot, please call the Inspector of Elections at 1-888 2115332. The admin office does not have ballots to give you. You can only get them from the inspector of elections as they are specific to your district. Again, that number is 1-888-211-5332. And if you didn't get that number, just call the front office. They'll give it to you. Um, if you'd like to see more information on the drought tolerance, CCNR change, and the IRS ruling, you can find more details on the Sun Lakes website under Board of Directors, then Elections, then Overview of Important Ballot Items for 2022 Elections. And it'll look basically something like this. So you've got each one of those that are listed with some more information. You know, voting for your representation on the Master Board is important. Please take the time to mark your ballots for the three candidates that you feel will follow the fiduciary responsibilities of board members as noted in the Davis-Sterling Act. This year, you also have the opportunity to vote for your district delegate and alternate district delegate. Please vote so that each district has a quorum. Follow the instructions on the envelopes. There's two of them and drop your completed ballots in the mail so that it arrives at the inspector of elections no later than April 11th. Um, one last thing, we kind of touched on it earlier with the speed, hummets, speed humps, but the weather is warming up. More members are out walking or riding bikes. Please, please drive the posted speed limits and inform your guests to follow the speed limits as well. And if we all do our part, we can all keep everyone safe. And finally, you know, this year as, as president, it, it, it was a little bumpy at first, but I've gotten pretty comfortable up here at this point in time. I can get through this without any cheating notes, so that's even better yet. But this board has been great to work with. Um, we are missing uh, Lori tonight. She's on vacation, but um, it's, it's been a great year, and I thank the board for putting um, their trust in me to be president, and thanks everyone for your service. With that, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. I move we adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have adjourned. Our next meeting is April 27th at 6.30. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming.